when fuel prices go up, what do you do? Do you, do you get annoyed? Do you, do you criticize the government? Do you join protests? Do you embark on a would-be revolution? Well, that is exactly what happened in Kazakhstan on January 2nd, when tens of thousands of people started taking to the streets in the country's largest city over the removal of a fuel price cap. And over the week, they set fire to public buildings, stormed city hall, and violently clashed with security forces. But were such large protests all about fuel? Yes and no. For years, there's been anger at the country's officials, and fuel prices just seem to be the straw that broke the camel's back. In particular, many people are angry at the former president, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, a man who ruled the country since its independence until 2019. He gained the title of father of the nation. And since, I'm gonna use air quotes here, retiring, Nazarbayev has been the head of the Security Council, leading many to believe that his hand-picked successor, President Kasim Jomar Tokayev, was nothing more than a puppet for him, a weak leader, but over the last week, he shed that image. Using the unrest to oust Nazarbayev and his allies from power completely, riding off of power popular anger at the old guard. Also, despite initially seeming compliant with protester demands, right, things like promising to reintroduce price caps for fuel, he quickly 180. The internet was shut off for some time, which actually shows how interconnected the world is. Right, Kazakhstan is like the second largest producer of Bitcoin, and the shutdown appeared to heavily affect its price. But also beyond that, right, the, the big headline thing, the president went as far as ordering troops to just shoot protesters. And on top of that, he also asked members of the Collective Security Treaty Organization, kind of uh, imagine NATO, but of former Soviet countries, to intervene. With that leading to Russia and five other countries sending over 2,000 troops to help quell the unrest. And so as of yesterday morning, things seemingly have calmed down, though the events reportedly have left over 100 dead and thousands of arrests have been made. Also, while providing no evidence, you had the president blaming the protests on foreign trained terrorists and saying on television, the militants have not laid down their arms. They continue to commit crimes or are preparing for them. Whoever does not surrender will be destroyed. I've given the order to law enforcement agencies and the army to shoot to kill without warning. With that rhetoric also being used in a meeting among CSTO members with Russian President Vladimir Putin repeating the rhetoric Putin also promising that no revolutions would happen in CSTO member states, while the United States Secretary of State Anthony Blinken urged Kazakhstan to respect protesters' right to demonstrate. Blinken also warning that it might be hard to get Russian troops to leave Kazakhstan now that they've been invited in. And those concerns have also led some to ask, is the crisis in Kazakhstan the rebirth of the Soviet Union? Though, notably, this isn't the first event in the region that's required interference. Russian troops are now on what they refer to as peacekeeping missions in Armenia and Azerbaijan, stationed in Kazakhstan, were poised to help Belarusian authorities maintain power, and now are amassing at the Ukrainian border. Order. But for now, it remains to be seen what is going to happen from here, whether Putin will get some kind of Russia-dominated state, or maybe whether one of these revolutions succeeds. And of course, with that, I'd love to know any and all thoughts you have on this news, where you think it's going to go, what you hope to see, anything. But as always, thank you for watching, subscribing, and thanks to our fantastic sponsors like Coinbase, and more specifically, CoinbaseToFranco.com for making these extra morning videos possible. With the way YouTube often hits, cracks down, suppresses what they see as controversial content, having partners like this is incredibly important. So if you're looking to get into crypto and or you just want like $42 for free, sign up now. It's a great service that I use, it's free, and you get $10 in Bitcoin just for signing up and $32 more in other crypto just for learning about them. You're welcome, and also thank you. But yeah, that said, I love you faces and all